So this first episode, we have a special treat for you guys. Uh, if you look in the description, I'm sure you've seen it, and it's probably the reason as to why you're watching this video in the first place. But the LC500 is gonna be the topic of discussion for today. We'll talk about why it came about, some theories on why the car was created, why it didn't sell as well as you would think it would, being a Lexus brand performance car. And uh, we'll get into just my driving, my overall driving impressions of the LC500. Why did the LC500 flop, if you will? I guess you can say it flopped. It didn't do as well as we thought it was going to do, or as well as the industry thought it was going to do, or at least as well as Toyota hoped it was going to do, but it flopped nonetheless. <laughs> It's a very stylish car. Uh, it looked maybe a little bit ahead of its time, but it is a very sharp car. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. The interior is probably one of the best interiors that Lexus has put in a, in a luxury sport car, but it didn't sell. Our test car was $106,000. That is a lot of money, if you haven't noticed. And then when you look at its little brother, we'll call him the little brother, the RCF. You can get the RCF for $40,000 less than our test rig. Uh, when we did the RCF a little while back, it was at $68,000. To top it all off, the RCF is actually a little bit faster. So why would I spend an extra $40,000 to go slower? I think that's the reason why it didn't sell as well as Toyota and Lexus hoped it would. So my overall driving impression on the car, I think it's a phenomenal car. It's, it's, it's fast, it's got power. Don't burst the work on water! Unless you've got power! <laughs> uh, the luxury features on the inside are just that. They're, it's very luxurious. And I, I mean, it, it drives great. It's really reminiscent of the RCF in certain aspects. It's not as raw as the RCF is. Uh, just like if you compared the RCF to what the ISF was, the ISF only had 418 horsepower. But if you drive that car on the track, it was just a raw horsepower feeling, even though the car was a sedan. You get into the RCF, and although it had 467 horsepower in that particular year, it felt more refined. It was faster, but it was more in tune with the, the road, if you will, with, with the curves. It, it had a better overall feel. And when you get into the LC500, it is also more refined, but it seemed like it's so refined that it's actually a little bit slower. On the outside, we had a yellow color. Now, if you look up this car on the internet, all the yellow photos that are out there do it no justice whatsoever. Every yellow picture I saw for this car made it seem like this very bright, vibrant yellow uh, that was reminiscent of a yellow that you would find on a Corvette. But it's really not. It's more subdued than you would think. It's metallic. You do have the a small metal flake that's in the paint as well. It's really a gorgeous color. On the inside, our test rig had a tan interior. It was brown. It wasn't tan. It was brown. It was almost like a saddle brown, a cross between a saddle brown and tan. Uh, and it was all throughout the interior, even the headliner. The entire interior was this brown color, and I liked it. The pictures on the internet, once again, do it no justice whatsoever. It is a, a much better looking car in person than you would think, especially on the interior. When you're driving the car, or if we want to compare it to its little brother, the RCF, it sounds phenomenal. It sounds a lot better than the RCF. It has a sport tuned exhaust just like the RCF does. And it actually the engine is the same. It has a little less horsepower, uh, but uh, it sounds phenomenal. The downshifting, the rev matching that it does when it downshifts uh, is, is spot on. The transmission has a 10 speed automatic transmission with paddle shift, of course, uh, and it's it shifts seamlessly. It's it's really a well put together drivetrain uh, all together. If you plan on putting something or someone in the back seat of the LC500, uh, you should probably think twice about it. Anything a little bit bigger than, uh, let's say, a book, or maybe you may be able to fit a grocery bag back there, uh, but anything bigger than that, you'll be a little cramped for space, uh, especially if you try to put a person in the back. Your seat will have to move up 
there's no question about it. There's no way around it. The roof on our test rig was carbon fiber. It looked phenomenal. It was a very nice touch for them to do that. Also carry over on some of the models of the RCF that we have seen before. Now the big question is, should you go out and actually buy an LC500? It's $106,000 if you want it properly equipped with good options and, and, and laid out just like we, ha we had it laid out for our test vehicle. Now, with that being said, it's not for everyone. If you're one of those types of people that drive the American V8 muscle cars, the Mustangs, the Camaros, and things of that nature, this will feel a lot different to you. This is, uh, this is not your uh, line them up and let's go stoplight to stoplight vehicle. This is, this is a, in a league of its own when compared to those types. Can you make it faster? Absolutely. If you just go on YouTube and type in supercharged RCF, you'll find tons of videos of someone uh, driving around in a red RCF supercharged and it sounds amazing. I think it sounds pissed. So you can easily make these cars fast. You can make these cars faster. It's already fast. If you're someone that's coming from another luxury car, another Lexus, and you just want something a little bit faster, maybe you are hopping out of uh, a Lexus sedan like an ES300, then you can easily jump into this. If a primary consideration is speed, then you would probably look elsewhere. You could find a lot faster of a car for a lot less money, i.e. the new Corvette. You can find that's 495 horsepower, mid-engine rear-wheel drive, and you can get those far cheaper than what you can find uh, for a brand new LC500. So why was the LC500 even created in the first place? Toyota likes to fill gaps in their auto line in order to keep people in the Toyota family. Let's just say you buy a Toyota 86, and they want to keep you in the family, so where do you go from there? What do you jump to from there? So you really, until the Super came out, you had to jump into something in the Lexus brand. Let's just say the Lexus RCF. Well, now the Super is here and it's filling that gap between the Toyota 86 and the Lexus RCF. Well, if you were an RCF owner, where do you go from there? The only thing you could jump to would be the Lexus LFA. So instead of making that big jump from an $80,000 car all the way up to a $400,000 car, in the meantime, you got yourself the LC500. Now it is no, in no way, shape or form a jump in performance. It's not a gap filler in performance by any means, but as far as styling and price, it 100% is. It is more along the lines styling wise of an LFA. You could almost call it a baby LFA if you really think about it. Uh, when you look at the lights and things like that, uh, the, the lights and the, the body lines on the side, especially the front end. Uh, it, it is definitely reminiscent of the LFA. And if you're one of the unlucky ones that did not get an LFA or one of the people that are normal like myself that can't afford an LFA, but you want something a little bit nicer uh, than uh, the RCF, then the uh, LC500 is definitely the way to go. That's gonna conclude it for today. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up for the like. We'll see you guys next time.